Today we will discuss about the parallel resonance. So we will continue with the, from the previous lecture. Here we have drawn the circuit. You can see that the AC source is connected to L and R. L and R is in kind of, is, is, has been connected in parallel to C. Now uh, here the current is the current is IC. Here it's IL. Here we can see that the current is I. And the corresponding this is the phasor diagram. Corresponding phasor diagram at resonance. We'll just explain this one afterward. So we'll just try to see that. We can see that the parallel resonance is set to occur in a circuit which containing an inductor in parallel, okay, with the capacitor. So here, uh, the resistance has been connected with uh, the value R is very very small. So what we will do is that by using KCL, the source current small i, it can be written as small i is equal to I L plus I C. Now here R is small and I L and I C will be almost 180 degree out of phase, okay. Now since the capacitor current IC leads the voltage current by 90 degree while the inductor current I lags behind the voltage already we have discussed this thing by nearly 90 degree so this is the result. Now <coughs> we know that uh, I is equal to V by Z Z is the impedance offered by the circuit at the terminal okay now uh, also we can write I L I L is equal to V by R plus J omega L this could be written here and I see it could be like V by I by uh, uh, J omega C sorry 1 by J omega C extremely sorry 1 by J omega C so it will be like J omega C into V now um, <coughs> so uh, we will just substitute this value in the first equation the value of 1 2 and 3 in this equation we will get V by Z is equal to V by R plus J J omega L plus J omega C V okay now <coughs> uh, eliminating V will get 1 by Z equal to V by R plus J omega C plus uh, 1 by R plus J omega C plus J omega C and this is L this is so let this be we will consider this one to be equation one and this one be to be equation two now rationalizing the first and this first we will get one by z is equal to r minus j omega l by r square plus j square rather j square j square will be plus r minus i so it will become omega square l square okay plus j omega c so after rationalizing this one, so v in 1 by z is equal to y, then admittance so y is equal to 1 by z is equal to, we we'll get r plus j, after simplification, we will write like this, omega cube l square c minus omega l, okay, uh, this by r square plus omega square l square, so this will be your equation number 3. Now here why is an admittance that we know okay uh, <clears throat> now the source current small i and the source voltage v will be in phase when the imaginary part of the y is zero so uh, imaginary part of the y is this much so if this, this will be zero this part if it, this part is zero okay so it will, do, it will give you the equation like this omega c r square plus omega cube l square c minus omega l equal to zero so either omega equal to zero or omega square l square c will be equal to l minus c r square so here from here we can get omega is equal to l root 1 by l c minus r square by l square so this will be equal to omega parallel okay so this will be equation number 4 where omega parallel is what is the this is the parallel resonant angular frequency okay now the corresponding fan uh, you know uh, parallel resonant frequency the corresponding parallel resonant frequency and that could be given like f parallel equal to omega parallel by 2 parallel equal to which will be 1 by 2 point and the root 
1 by LC minus under root R square by L square. So this will be a equation number 5. Yes. Now, <coughs> the impedance of the circuit will be purely resistive at resonance that we have already done before. So the source current and the source voltage being in phase. Now from equation number 3, already which we have discussed earlier, we have for admittance at resonance, y parallel is equal to r plus r square plus omega parallel square l square, right? See, this, this could be written as r by l by c, okay, which is equal to c r by l. So, this we have done with the help of the equation number 4, okay. So, this is with the, this is with the value of admittance and this has been written with the help of equation number 4, okay. Now, the circuit impedance at parallel resonance, which is called the dynamic resistance, it could be given like z parallel is equal to y1 by y parallel which is equal to l by cr now if r is very very small okay so this equation which is equation number six okay if r is very very small z parallel will be large and as r tends to zero z parallel will be tends to infinity also when r tends to zero omega parallel will becomes one by under root lc which is same as the series resonant angular frequency now, uh, <clears throat> the line current at parallel resonance, the line current at parallel resonance, I parallel will be given by, what will be given by mod of V by Z parallel. So, it is uh, like, uh, you know, the capacitor current, or the capacitor current, that could also be written uh, at parallel resonance as I C parallel equal to mod of V by 1 by omega parallel C something like this okay so this will be 7 and this will be 8 now <clears throat> the ratio of this two that is i c uh, parallel by main parallel current is equal to given by this the series the, the ratio of this two which will be y parallel c z parallel okay now uh, this will be equal to omega uh, parallel L by R. Okay, so this will be your equation number 9. Okay, here we have used that relation Z parallel is equal to L by CR, which we have already derived. Now the Q factor of this circuit is defined as the ratio of the capacitor circuit, okay, to the line current at parallel resonance. Thus, we can write Q is equal to IC parallel by I parallel, or small i you can use. Small i. Okay. which could be omega parallel l by r this will be equal to 10 now q is usually large the capacitor current at parallel uh, resonance is much larger than the supply current okay now this expression q can also be found from the energy consideration as follows where we can write q is equal to 2 pi into maximum energy stored okay per cycle which we have done earlier also in the case of series circuit divided by energy dissipated same thing will get we'll get the same thing if we we'll use this formula uh, you can assume again the you know the instantaneous current small i l is equal to v naught by omega uh, parallel l into sine omega parallel into t minus 90 degree okay this is the <coughs> uh, inductance current assume that omega uh, parallel l is very very greater than r okay similarly if it is uh, omega parallel into l is very very greater than r we have assume over here now so that will give you i l as a function of t equal to minus v naught by omega parallel l okay uh, into cos omega parallel into t this one okay now <clears throat> the instantaneous magnetic energy stored in the inductor is given by that we have already known we have the idea from the plus two level that is given by uh, half l i l square okay which could be half v naught square uh, c cos square omega parallel into t now since omega parallel square omega parallel square is nearly equal to one by 
L C. The instantaneous electrostatic energy stored in the capacitor is half C V naught square sine square omega parallel T. So the instantaneous total energy stored it is given by half C V naught square. This is the total energy. Okay, cos square omega uh, parallel into T plus sin square omega parallel into T. Obviously, this product, this comes to be one, which is given by half C V naught square, which is the maximum energy stored per cycle. So the average power dissipated in the circuit is average average power dissipated in the circuit. In the circuit is half V naught by omega parallel L square into R, which is given by V naught square C R by 2L. So substituting these values, okay, in the, in the expression for this one that is Q is equal to 2 pi maximum energy stored by energy dissipated. So you get Q is equal to 2 pi half C V naught square into okay uh, that is given by 2 now uh, here uh, one thing is there we have uh, mentioned this thing uh, v naught square here, here the energy density per cycle is <coughs> you need to remember it is v naught square cr by 2 l per cycle if you want to write per cycle you have to mention divided by f parallel okay so for the per cycle it have to divide by the frequency so half c v naught square by v naught square c r divided by this much so it will go here in the numerator 2 l f parallel so ultimately we will get v parallel l r which you can compare that it is same as equation number same as equation number 10 this is same as equation number 10 which we have earlier derived okay so this is you know the expression q it has just been derived in the alternate way right <coughs> One thing you need to remember that the parallel resonance circuit is find application as the tuned circuit at the input stage of a radio receiver. So that is an application and as the frequency determining element of the electronic oscillator. Now just by varying L or C both, you know, uh, in the expression 5 which we have derived, uh, uh, the resonant frequency can be varied and the circuit can thus be tuned to the desired frequency giving a maximum impedance at that frequency. Now, since the circuit serves as a reservoir of the frequency, it is referred to as a, it is referred to as a tank circuit. Okay. Now, from further viewpoint, the current circulating in a circuit is very large, being Q times the supply current at the resonance. So, the circuit is thus a reservoir of current and is stored energy in the form of magnetic uh, energy and electrical energy. Okay. Hence, it is called a tank circuit also. So this is just about uh, the parallel resonance of the uh, LRC circuit uh, in parallel. So this is with this we come to the end of the series of the circuit of LRC as far as the syllabus is concerned. So thank you very much and again if you will find this to be very very uh, effective then just subscribe this channel. Okay thank you.